Princess Peach has always been a damsel in distress. I mean, yeah, you got to play as her in Super Mario Bros. 2, but let's be honest, that probably wouldn't have happened if there wasn't already a lady in Doki Doki Panic. I mean, heck, people were complimenting the nice change of pace that Super Mario 3D World gave us by making her a playable character again, but why does nobody seem to remember that our dear Princess Toadstool actually had an adventure of her own? Super Princess Peach. This is a game that plenty of people know about, but I have a hard time finding anybody who's actually played it, and I'm a bit curious as to why. The sprites are really well done, some of the music is pretty catchy, and... Oh. Okay, yeah, that'll do it. For the three of you that are out of the loop, this game's unique game mechanic is that Peach's various mood swings give her different powers. So, let's address the elephant in the room. Is it sexist? Yeah, pretty much. Are we going to dwell on it? No. When she's happy, Peach forms tornadoes and can fly. When she's angry, she lights things on fire! Her tears extinguish flames and let her run faster. And finally, being calm restores her health. Oddly enough, the game seems to imply that Peach has always had these powers, so why exactly has she never used them before and hasn't since? Besides, why is she even on a mission? And to quote my cookie clicker video, where are the boys? I mean, Peach is content to just sit around the castle, get kidnapped and bake cakes, so what's the dealio? Bowser built a summer home on a new land called Vibe Island, where he finds the magical Vibe Scepter that lets emotions run wild, as, uh, most Vibe Scepters do. So he sends his troops to Peach's castle. Since the princess was out for a walk at that particular moment, the Koopa army instead captures Mario, Luigi, and a plethora of Toads, with only Peach to save them, with a magical talking umbrella that Toadsworth conveniently bought for her. I wouldn't be surprised if you missed out on that explanation, because while the plot is being dumped, you're also asked to play a minigame at the exact same time. See, this game really tries to shoehorn in touchscreen controls, but it's really not that bad when compared to some other DS titles. Regardless, you're going to be playing a pointless touchscreen minigame at least once per world. Outside of Peach's emotions, though, her new umbrella is the game's other unique game mechanic. Meet Perry the Parasol, a little boy who is turned into a talking umbrella that can also turn into a submarine. Okay. Perry brings more to the table than the umbrellas from Kingsman. Not only are you able to buy upgrades for him to unlock new moves, but he can also be used to pick up enemies and items to be flung. Oh, and he can also eat bad guys to refill your special meter. Forget Eevee, Perry the Parasol is the world's most dangerous carnivore. Can an Eevee turn into a submarine? No. No, it can't. Honestly, I'm shocked that Perry hasn't made a return appearance. He would add a little something unique to Peach's ensemble and has some moves that would be pretty awesome in Smash. Come on, are you seriously telling me that you wouldn't want Peach firing energy blasts from her parasol like the freaking penguin? Honestly, I just like working these pop culture references in so that my editor can have some fun in Photoshop. Love you, Sean. And yeah, you embark on a pretty straightforward platforming game. Beating up the bad guys, collecting coins, solving puzzles, buying power-ups, and finding collectibles. You have your grassy level, a forest level, a spooky ghost level, a volcano level, a beach level, an ice level, a sky level, and a big bad final level. Just like pretty much every other Mario game. I mean, come on guys, let's try not to break too much of the status quo here. Honestly, the game itself really isn't that difficult, or challenging. And not even in the Kirby sense, where it's easy to get through the levels, but finding every little collectible is hard. In fact, in order to get the best ranking on a stage, all you have to do is rescue the level's three captive toads, and they're usually in pretty obvious places. The bosses are really nothing to write home about, with some being too easy, or some being just... plain stupid. Sure, the three-part final fight against Bowser was alright, but... really? So, what's your reward for making Peach go through more mood swings than Tommy was so, and successfully navigating the relatively average 8-hour completion time? This. The ending of this game is pretty infamous, stating that someone might be using the Lost Vibe Scepter right now. Has your mom been laughing happily a lot? Maybe the Vibe Scepter is hidden inside your house somewhere. Jesus, I thought people were just making immature jokes about the Vibe Scepter being a vibrator, but the game pretty much confirms it. I really can't think of an ending that can top that, so... This.